Good evening to everyone who's joined us this evening on this Wednesday, December 8th. Uh, you are joining us uh, to have a discussion in regards to the Multnomah County Library. Uh, there's a capital bond project that involves the Albina and North Portland libraries. Uh, you are joining uh, a number of folks from the team from Multnomah County, as well as Lever uh, Architects, Nolan Tam, uh, and we are welcoming you into this space. Thank you so much for joining us to have this conversation. Uh, about libraries, where we discover and learn and explore and we grow uh, and how they can benefit the communities. Uh, some of you who joined us earlier, uh, you heard Ali, we have um, other uh, language interpretations available. There is Somali uh, as well as Spanish. And uh, if you are in need of those services, you can utilize uh, those buttons along the lower portion of your Zoom screen, uh, interpretation and click there. We want to make sure everyone is able to engage uh, and their voice can be heard. We value all of your input into this process. I know that there are likely others joining us in the space. Thank you for your patience as we uh, get situated through all of the Technical, technological uh, issues. Thank you to our ASL interpreter as well, uh, who is helping us this evening to make sure uh, that we can communicate those uh, with those of us who are <laughs> um, joining us and we're hearing impaired. We appreciate and we want to hear your voice as well. Others are joining us in the space. So just give us maybe one minute at 6.05 and we can move forward. I hope that everyone had a restful and gratitude filled Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, it's very, very, um, maybe not surprising is the word. I cannot believe that we are in the month of December in the last month of 2021. Um, we are still engaging on the Zoom platform, but I am grateful for you joining us uh, even in this uh, makeshift uh, virtual space. It's a time where we can engage. I can see your smiles. We can engage as best we can until we get back to life uh, normal or as a new normal maybe. Well, at 6.05, I wonder if we should move to the next slide, Ms. Chandra. We wanna let everyone know that the meeting is being recorded so that other community members can hear the conversation and be a part of what we're doing. And uh, there will be also opportunities for continued input on the project. Uh, so if you do not wish to appear, you can always turn off your camera along the bottom of your Zoom screen towards the left there. There is um, a mute and stop video. You can stop your video. Uh, but we would love to engage with you as best we can and see your face in the space. Um, the breakout groups, oh, they will be in, recorded this time. Often in meetings, I don't see that, but they will not be shared. They are for the team's internal use. Uh, tonight, I believe that everyone uh, will be muted uh, so that we can um, have some consistency, some continuity, um, some order as we um, are discussing together. We're going to ask you uh, to utilize the chat feature if you are able uh, and um, also to use the raise hand feature. So if you look in your Zoom, also across the bottom, there is a... Um, icon called reactions with the little smiley face. And if you click on that, uh, there is the raise hand feature. And so if you'll use that feature, uh, we'll be able to um, call on you. And, um, but feel free to use the chat function at any anytime uh, to leave your comments or questions. Uh, next slide, please. Oh wow, some exciting news for those of you who have joined us tonight. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to win a Visa gift card. Uh, and so um, uh, that's an exciting thing today. We hope to engage you uh, at some point. We'll, we'll be drawing from that and Chandra will help us through that process. Next slide, please. And I believe I am turning it to Kelsey for our land acknowledgement. 
Oh, actually, I'm going to pick those up. Oh, great. Unless, unless you want to, Kelsey, I was planning on grabbing them, but. Um, so we have a couple of acknowledgements to do uh, that we like to do at the beginning of our sessions together to sort of remind us where we are, ground us in not only the place that we are, but in the history of our neighborhood. So um, our land acknowledgement is about the indigenous folks here and the land beneath us were the traditional village sites of the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Bands of the Chinook, Tualatin Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia and Willamette Rivers. We are honored to be guests upon these lands. And I would encourage you to go to this website called nativeland.ca. It actually shows you all of the different tribes in different areas all across uh, the country and Canada, the US and Canada and other areas. It's really informative. We would also like to acknowledge where we are um, in our neighborhood and the history of our neighborhood. And so um, our Black community acknowledgement starts as, uh, in the same way that we acknowledge the systemic policies of genocide, relocation, and assimilation that still impact many Indigenous families today, we acknowledge that the Black community in Portland has been displaced and harmed by a history of exclusion laws, redlining, and displacement. In very recent history, the construction of I-5, the Vanport floods, and the seizure of land for the hospital have caused harm and scattered the community. And all of this is focused exactly where we are in the state of Oregon and in this time. Thank you, Chandra. Again, for those who are just joining us in the virtual space, thank you for joining us uh, in this great conversation around the North Portland and Albina Library Project for the Multnomah County uh, Library Bond Project. My name is Erica Warren. I'm with Tri Excellence, and I'll be helping us through this conversation tonight. We want to uh, acknowledge some agreements on how we are going to engage in our discussion tonight. Uh, first and foremost, as I've mentioned, your voice matters. We want to hear from this community uh, as to the things that would make this space welcoming uh, and beautiful and uh, beneficial, uh, a place that there is value for you to engage in. So please share with us all of your thoughts, questions, concerns. We ask that you would stay engaged. And if you can, please keep your camera on. We do understand that we're around the dinner hour for most families. So uh, staying engaged also means we understand you need to take care of your needs as well. So as you need to uh, take a break, attend to your family, cook to your, uh, your uh, pets and loved ones, please do so. Uh, we ask you to stay engaged. We ask you to listen to understand. Uh, I love that we are all teachers and learners. Uh, there's going to be um, a lot of ideas and passion and um, um, thoughts, maybe even some who um, are have experienced past harm. So we want to honor uh, that. We don't want to cause further harm to each other. We want to come into this space in a, a spirit of collaboration and partnership together. So we ask you to listen, to understand, keep an open mind. Uh, we ask you to respect your own and the other's truths. Please be your authentic self and engage uh, in this conversation uh, in a lovely collaborative and partnering way. Step up and step back. Uh, I love that because we have several folks who may want to contribute. So we ask you to just take um, inventory of how much time uh, you are spending. Let others get some in, if you will. And uh, we will always come back to you. There's an opportunity to also uh, have your thoughts in the chat as well. We want to engage as many folks in the community as we can. Uh, if this is um, okay with you, I don't know if there are others or other things uh, that we should add to our community agreements, uh, but I hope that this is uh, um, acceptable uh, for our collaborative community conversation tonight. Yes. Are you seeing any hands? I don't see any. Anyone else? I don't see the whole screen. Let me open it up. There are no hands raised that I can see and there's nothing in the chat. Beautiful. So thank you, Erica. Indeed. I'll turn it over to Chandra with Lever Architecture. Awesome. All right. I just want to give folks um, a heads up that the content of this meeting is the same content that we shared on November 13th. 
There weren't quite as many folks here as um, we would have liked to engage with. So we've invited folks back again and we're gonna present that same information. So if you came last time, I appreciate you. I'm glad that you're here. Maybe you will learn something new from this, but understand this is gonna be the same content. And, um, and uh, really the content today is going to be about the Albina and North Portland libraries and getting information from you about what would support your community and uh, how you would like to see these libraries uh, be renovated. So here's the meeting agenda for today. We've just gone through the introductions and a little bit of the background, and we're going, we're going to have a presentation on the library building shortly here. There's going to be a little bit more introduction before we get there. And then the second half of this meeting will be the discussion portion where we'll open it up. We'll be asking you questions and asking you to engage with us and let you know what, uh, let us know what you think about these things. Uh, and then we're going to do a raffle. So stick around. You'll be able to give us your name and email so that you can enter the raffle. I'm going to do a little bit of introduction um, about the team that you're going to be hearing from today. Um, these are our, uh, some of our primary team members who are going to be doing a lot of the talking today. Um, Perry was with us at the last meeting. Today we are really excited that we have Eddie, who is the um, administrator at the Albina branch, and then uh, myself and Tyler Nishitani and Kelsey McWilliams. We are all from Lever Architecture. We are the design team. So we will be hearing what you say and using that to inform the design of the libraries. There is also a larger team that um, I will share with you as well. But for now, I'm going to stop um, sharing screen for a moment and let Eddie introduce himself and uh, take a moment to share with us. And I think I actually hold on one second, Eddie, because I was sharing screen while you were in here and I'm going to ask you to unmute. Thank you. Um, hi, how's it going? I'm Eduardo Arizaga, Eddie. I'm the library administrator here at the Albina Library. That's an internal term that we use for the library manager. I'm here to um, give a brief introduction to you all and let you all know. I want to thank you all for spending your evening with us. I know it's it's an evening in the middle of the week um, and everyone's time is extremely precious. So I'm really thankful that you all are here to give input, to listen to what, what, what's being worked on and, and um, hear about what's being developed for this exciting project, especially when we think about these two libraries um, and, their, um, and the potential for what they have to become. Uh, I do wanna give some background for folks who are, may not be aware of it, but um, when voters approved the library capital bond in November of 2020, they did so with the assurance that all of our work around this would center the community we serve. Uh, the library, uh, MCL, Multnomah County, uh, takes the commitment very seriously, and I'm so glad to be with you as we continue working on this process to get you all to get as many voices at the table and hear as many, uh, hear as much input as we can. Um, this is one of several meetings that we've hosted. This is number three as part of the Chapter One uh, community outreach events, as Chandra mentioned, for Albina and North Portland. Uh, in addition, there's been other community engagement efforts that we've been doing. There was one just on Saturday at North Portland Library. So if you were there, thank you so much for participating in that. Um, and there's a few more that may be coming up shortly. Uh, the Library Capital Bond Project is really more about buildings and it's really more about, it, it's more than just buildings. Uh, these are projects that really are an investment in the community. I'm currently in one in a very early library building for Multnomah County. In fact, the the standing, the last, the oldest standing library building at the Albina Library, which was built in and opened in 1912. So, you know, we are working with very old facilities and, you know, these buildings are still here and they've been repurposed and hopefully these newer buildings. Yes, I can slow down. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, are, are really, have really changed and shifted focus throughout the years. And we hope that these future buildings are able to do that as well and can do that moving moving into the future. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that libraries, what we know as library professionals and people working in libraries is that they're more than just about books. And we see this every day when community members come in for the variety of reasons that they need to enter our buildings, whether it's a warm place to be in or whether it's a cool place to be in, whether it's somewhere that they stop by after school to pick up some, some books um, um, or use the resources that we have here uh, and the technologies. Um, they're, they're also becoming 
uh, we're learning about new possibilities of what libraries can become, technology hubs, uh, maker spaces, studios for recording and making new media, podcasts, places for intergenerational connection, small business startup locations, performance spaces. It's it just, it, 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 the library is just continues to grow in its possibilities and its capability of what it can fill in a community and really centering the needs of the community. Um, with all that, and I shared a lot of what libraries have become, uh, you know, what it ends up becoming is really going to be up to all of you who participate in this. And those of you who are here tonight who are able to connect with your community and have them also come in in the, in the different ways, whether it's an online survey or whether it's being able to attend a future meeting, it's going to be really important to hear from so many different people because that input is going to drive the work um, of, what these, of what these spaces look like not just when we first open, but moving into the future. Hopefully these, we hope for these spaces to be adaptable and what they open as they may shift and change. And that's where that input's gonna be really important. It's gonna be continual. I'm grateful to all of you for your time um, and the energy and ideas that you bring tonight. And I just can't wait to see what gets developed. I'm gonna mute myself. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, that was a a great uh, intro to the library process uh, that we're kind of looking at here today. I'm gonna go back to sharing. Um, these are lots of other team members who uh, have been working on this project. So lots of folks down here, you'll see our architect partners, Nolan Tam, and uh, lots of folks from Multnomah County Libraries and outside of Multnomah County Library. So there are a lot of people that really care about these projects and uh, work full time every day on the future of these libraries. And we're all really proud to be here. And in fact, Lever Architecture, our office is right over on Albina. We're really close to the North Portland branch. Um, you see all these little uh, house icons. This is the location of where all of our staff members live. There are some folks who live a little bit farther out, but a great number of us live here in North Portland. And uh, these are our libraries too. So we're really proud to get to be part of this um, library renovation and new library buildings that are coming out. Uh, we've also done a lot of projects in the area and we've, uh, we've been here. We participate in the community through lots of different youth programs like Empower Her and Your Street, Your Voice and Elso Inc. used to be Camp Elso. So these are all programs that are engaging youth right here in our neighborhood in different kinds of design processes. And part of that, part of our passion for that is really just wanting to be part of a network for students in case they are interested in being designers in the future or working in construction in the future, we can make connections for them and really engage with them to help them succeed in uh, this industry. Because as a person of color and as a woman in the design industry, um, it's not a very diverse place. And I personally would really like to see lots more women and people of color um, in positions like I have. And so this is kind of how we do it by really focusing here on our neighborhood. So I'm just gonna share the overall schedule with you. We're right about here. This first phase is the community engagement and programming phase. We're also doing community engagement throughout our other design phases, schematic design and design development. So we've just sort of concentrated lots of meetings up front, and we will continue to schedule these meetings throughout the process. Tyler, you wanna take over? Yeah, thanks, Chandra. Um, before I jump in and share some ideas about identities and experience, a couple things. I'm gonna try and go slow so our interpreters have a chance to keep up. And I wanna give a quick recap of some thoughts we shared at the first virtual meeting um, at the end of September. At that meeting, we shared just how incredibly excited our team is to work on these libraries because we see it as a tremendous opportunity, an opportunity to vastly improve, to reimagine, redefine, and preserve these libraries, these frontline community resources, so they can better support us all, offering the resources, assistance, and space that enriches or even is critical to our lives. Um, and this opportunity comes at a time and at the center of neighborhoods whose communities need this investment, both functionally and symbolically. 
And we wanted to make it absolutely clear that these are your libraries. And we aim to run a design process that keeps that at the forefront. So now on to today's message. In this community engagement phase, we're trying to do a lot. And a part of that includes collecting data. Data about, about which services are your favorite, about what kind of seating you prefer, about how you're getting to the library, uh, where you want us to put more power outlets, uh, you know, technical stuff like that. That information directly helps us design the libraries and it is important, especially later on, but we wanna collect more than just technical data. There's more to you all than just that. To design a library that immediately makes you feel welcome, a library that mirrors your identity, that feels like it belongs to you, that requires a different kind of feedback and a different kind of insight. After the hype around the library's grand opening has subsided, and these libraries lose their brand new luster, what's it going to take for these buildings to be and to remain being pillars of your community? If anyone has an answer to that question, uh, raise that hand button. <laughs> I'll wait. Um, I'll bet it's not in the form of technical data though. Through this community engagement, we welcome you to share your truths so that you can be confident that we get you and the way you see these libraries being. This stuff can be uncomfortable to talk about, but we think it's so important because fundamentally, the way that each one of us experiences the world makes us feel like we belong feel connected, feel excited, feel inspired, that varies amongst all of us. Our mashup of identities, our unique experiences, maybe what we ate for lunch, or if we didn't get lunch, it all plays a part in how we perceive things, what vibes we pick up. And today, as we ask for your feedback, we invite you to embrace those identities. We love to hear about your experiences, your stories, even if it's unclear how we might use those to design the libraries. Because we're gonna gather up as much feedback, as many lenses as we can, sit with it all for a bit, and with the community's help, braid it into a set of design principles that will guide the design and the spirit of these projects regularly checking back in with you all to make sure that we're on the right track. So thank you for being open with us tonight. We absolutely appreciate it. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to Chandra. Thanks Tyler. I just wanna share a little bit with you about the engagement that we've been doing so far, right? We kind of started this at the end of September. We had a couple of big engagement meetings, both on Zoom and in person. We've been meeting with library staff. We've been doing interviews with community stakeholders, so leaders of community-based organizations that work in the neighborhood, neighborhood to support this community. We've also created a youth engagement program. So we have about 18 um, students between 13 and 18 years old who we meet with every month and talk about design and libraries. And the plan is to engage them throughout the entire process. So not just at the beginning, but all the way through the design phases. And we continued that in November. We're meeting with lots of folks and having these larger meetings. And now here we are in December. We're right here, today's event. We've had, um, we had one this weekend that was in person that was really fun. And so we definitely appreciate folks coming out and engaging with us then. And we're gonna do that again. So, you know, community engagement isn't about first come first serve. If you missed the first meeting, that's it. You don't get a chance to participate. We're really representing all of this information as many times as we can so that all of you get the opportunity to uh, let us know what you think about these things. And that's what you're gonna be seeing today. So in schematic design and design development, we will be scheduling more meetings. 
and we will let you know about those. So the different kinds of things we've been doing are these large community meetings like today. We've been doing smaller focus groups that are focused around communities that are typically um, not consulted on these kinds of projects. So uh, the Black community who've been displaced in many different ways, many different times in this neighborhood. Um, the African immigrant community, the Asian community, uh, lots of different folks. Um, and we've also been, like I said, working with library staff and leadership and youth and doing those community stakeholder interviews. So these are really all the different groups that we're focusing on in addition to uh, neighborhood associations and kind of putting the word out generally so that we can get as many folks here in these kind of meetings as possible. Not everyone is quite as easy to reach. But here are some images of some of those uh, meetings that you may or may not have gone to. This is at the farmer's market. This is at Hacienda, some staff engagement and Zoom meetings. And then here is um, the beginnings of a list of all of these different kinds of stakeholders and community-based organizations that we've been reaching out to. So if you have any questions specific to any of that intro information, please feel free to add it to the chat. We're gonna have verbal discussion later in the program. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to Kelsey to start our library tours. Thank you, Chandra. And thanks to all of you for joining us this evening. First, we have a little bit of a poll. So Tyler's gonna launch a poll for you all to take and you're welcome to select more than one answer. But this is to learn how you use the libraries now. If for some reason, oh, I was oh, going go to ahead. say, if, if for some reason the poll has not popped up on your screen, feel free to add your um, answers to these questions, this first one, and then we'll switch to the second question um, in the chat. Yeah, when so we sent out a reminder email, it just had a little note in there about polls sometimes don't work if you don't have uh, an updated version of Zoom, and that happens to all of us. So. We're kind of doubling up on it, so it's easy for you to respond in the chat if you'd like to. Shandra, you want to go to the next slide so people can see you that too? Next slide is up. Okay. I'm so gonna... the second part of this question is, which libraries do you use the most? So you may use a couple. You may go to Central. You may use your closest one. Um, so give us an answer. And if you don't see the library that you use the most on here, please drop it in the chat. Looks like most people have had an opportunity to answer this. So I'm gonna end the poll here in a few seconds. And then share the results for everybody. Y'all seeing that? Yeah. Cool. We've also got another, the second question in the chat. Awesome. Great, St. John's, Kenton, North Portland. Yes, they all work together as a network. So if you can't find something at one library, there's another one that has the resources that you need. So that's what we, love about the Multnomah libraries is that they can all work together. And then Chandra, if you wouldn't mind, we have just a minute to go back to that stakeholders map. Um, sure. and just do a quick view of that. Paul was wondering if we could take a look at that. So this is just a small portion. We have a very long list of a bunch of great community organizations, neighborhood associations, schools, nonprofits, community centers. So we're working closely with so many different organizations. And although we haven't reached all of them yet, we're still in this engagement phase of the project. So we'll be engaging with these organizations throughout the project to build community connections. Yeah, and these, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Um, this is just a screen capture, right? It's not actually the list, it's a screen capture of lots of different organizations in the neighborhood that uh, we engage with at different levels and at different times. And like Kelsey said, this is all a process that uh, goes throughout the entire design phase, uh, not just this first, um, this first phase through 2021. 
And if you have any community organizations that you love, please drop them in the chat and we'll make sure that we're connecting with them. So thank you all for engaging with the polls. And now we're going to do a quick tour of the libraries. So we're gonna start out with the Albina Library. The current Albina Library building is an original Carnegie building in the Spanish Renaissance style. Returning Albina Library to the current Knott Street location in August of 2021 was part of the library's larger effort to provide relevant services to people who are experiencing disenfranchisement. Albina Library was repeatedly relocated in the past. Those decisions did not account for the needs of all of the communities served. So here we are. It, oh, thank you, Liz, for dropping that information in the chat. And thank you, Esperanza, for dropping an organization into the chat. You can see Albina Library is located in the east side of Portland. Let's zoom in a bit more so you can see the I-5 off to the left-hand corner and MLK on the right-hand side of the screen. And our site is in the yellow square. We're zooming in even further to show you the red roof of the existing Carnegie building and the white roof of the existing ISOM operations center. Knott Street is to the north, Russell Street is to the south, and the plans for this location are to preserve the historic building. The operations building and garage buildings will be removed to make space for a new library building that we will be designing Here's some 3D views of the site to familiarize yourself. You can see the site is here, and then this Russell Street site is even larger. So we have lots of potential to build um, and to make a strong, a strong hub for the community. So our overall site area for the addition that's available to us is, is just over 39,000 square feet. Now we're just gonna walk through some photos to give you a little bit of a tour of the Albina Library. Here's this beautiful Spanish building with a stucco exterior and red terracotta tiles. We have green terracotta tiles around the front doors. We have our book returns in the front and this beautiful window detailing. We'll walk in through the vestibule and you can see this back wall is actually an addition, not original to the building. These arches are a little bit out of style with the rest of the building. And we're gonna take a look off to the left here. You can see that the space is rectangular, surrounded with these beautiful windows. We have our reception desk and our entry door. We have low book stacks for easy visibility. We have a bit of a children's, children's reading area. And we have some beautiful ceiling molding and details. So now we're gonna check out the ISOM operations building. Here's the ISOM building, this white roof you see on the Albino Library site. And you'll notice that this building has a parking lot next to it and it is across the street from the Wonder Ballroom. Here's some street views showing the ISOM building. It's two stories. Here's the adjacent parking lot. Now we're going to jump into a North Portland tour. The North Portland Library Building is an originally Carnegie building in the Jacob B. Thin style and first opened its doors in 1913. So it opened just one year later than that original Carnegie building for Albina. The original building included a children's room and a 150 seat assembly hall. In 1987, the Black Resource Center opened in a wing of the Port North Portland Library. 
And in 2000, an elevator was added to the building to improve accessibility. So here we see North Portland Library on the east side of Portland, but quite a bit north. Zooming in, you can see the large track field of Jefferson High School, Killingsworth Street, I-5 along the left-hand side of the slide, Portland Community College Cascade Campus with those greeneries, and Albina Street to the right-hand side. Zooming in, you can see that this site is quite a bit smaller than the Albina site. We have these beautiful trees and this historic roof. So our plans for this site is to pre preserve the historic building and design a small addition. Here's some 3D views from Killingsworth and Commercial, taking a look at the building and this site. So our total area is just over 15,000 square feet, quite a bit smaller than Albina. Here's this beautiful brick building. We'll take a tour of the outside. You can see the brick patterning and the concrete windows. Here's the side of the building with the elevator addition off to the left. Here's the building from Killingsworth and you can see the field of Jefferson High School. We'll walk up to the front doors. Here's the front desk and this beautiful plaster ceiling. Taking a look to the right, you'll see some study tables and some mid-height book stacks. There's some places for feature books, as well as a community message board. So now we'll turn towards the circulation desk. And then we'll walk back in. To this vaulted double height space room, you can see many reading tables and our computer tables. There's a seating nook in the back. Here's the stairs that will take us up to the second floor. Here's a thick picture of the elevator and here's the second floor assembly space. So here's some of the beautiful wood ceiling details that you can see in the North Portland Library. Here's a comparison of the two sites. So the Albina Library will really act more as a destination library for a larger area, and the North Portland Library will focus on serving as a media community. So they'll work together as a network. So you can see they're not too far apart from each other. I'll go ahead and let Tyler jump in. Yeah, I, we just wanted to point out here that um, MCL has, I think, 19 libraries now. So all of them work to, together in a big network. The North Portland one is a neighborhood library, so a little bit smaller scale, while the Albina one will become a, um, a what's the name of it? The district library, the destination library, kind of with, with the you know, more space and more programs to support uh, a broader community. All right, thanks for all the questions. Keep adding those questions in the chat. Um, we're gonna start into uh, the sort of more active question period. Um, but first, we wanna start off um, and get prepared for the raffle that we're gonna have later for these $50 gift card. So if you can please message Madeline, um, it says Lever after her name, uh, she works for Lever Architecture, and just direct message her your name and your email address, and she will put you in this online um, uh, random raffle generator system that we have 
um, but she needs to add each person separately. And that way you don't have to share your email with the entire group. So if you wanna message her directly, and if you don't know how to do that, just look at the chat and then where it says everyone, there's a little drop down. And then the drop down, you can just scroll down and find Madeline's name, click on that. And then the message uh, will go directly to her and not to the entire group. Yeah, Madeline put her message in the chat. All right, so now we're gonna move on and talk about different library themes, things that we have, things we have heard from the meetings that we have had previously and ask you to let us know if you agree with those and if there are things that we missed. Kelsey's gonna jump back in. All right, so we had an awesome meeting with the community last weekend up at North Portland Library. So here's some photos of that. We had a great craft table where people could make models and collages. And we had a bunch of interactive and informational boards around the outside of the room. So here's some library inspiration. So take a look at these images and the themes listed below them. And these are just some ideas to inspire you what future library spaces could be like. They can be more than just books. They can be about expanded literacy, whether that's cultural literacy, connection to nature, using flexible spaces for community meetings and other things. Here's some more spaces. Libraries can be inviting and spacious. They can focus on children's spaces or teen spaces. They can be places of discovery. They can focus on people and the book collections, but they can also provide cultural connections. They can provide help with careers and small business incubation. They can bridge generations. So we've been posting these inspirational images at all of our community meetings and also at the different libraries and a few spots around the community and folks can add stickers to the themes and images that are important to them. So we would love to give you an opportunity to do that today through a poll. So which themes are most important to you? We've listed them here. Tyler can go ahead and launch the poll and you can share your answers with us. If your poll isn't working, feel free to drop your answers into the chat. You can also pick more than one theme that's important to you. And the way that we did this was, uh, you know, thinking about all these different things that libraries can be presenting them in larger meetings and asking people to tell us what their priorities were. And then as you saw in those images, we left all of those posters behind, fresh clean ones with no marks on them at the North Portland Library, the Kenton Library and the Albina Library, as well as the Boys and Girls Club and the Dishman Community Center to give folks an opportunity to engage with those and uh, add stickers. And now we're sharing them again with you because you may not have seen those and you may not have been in, in those meetings, but we wanna know what your priorities are for these kind of spaces. And thank you for dropping that into the chat, John. If you have priorities for these libraries that you don't see listed here, please drop them into the chat. Great, so we'll last few seconds here to finish up this poll and then we'll go ahead and share back with you what everyone said. All right, I'm wrapping it up. Here, here's the results. Eight for children's space, seven people in collections and cultural connections, but some for all of them which makes sense. All of these are important. 
it's it's funny uh it's like totally dark and rainy outside right now and not many people are wanting to connect with nature but like it was the opposite it during like the sunny farmer's market (laughs) in the middle of a park that's Um, true but um good feedback we'll take it yeah good point so we asked some discussion questions at our previous events Uh, what makes you feel welcome in a space How do you want the library to make you feel? Just questions that open up conversation to start getting you thinking about what a library could be and what it could offer you and your community. So we've collected all that data and we've put them into word clouds and the words that are larger have received more answers. Um, And then we took these word clouds to our in-person event over the weekend and even more folks added to it. So so we would love you to add to it as well. If you see things here that you love, drop it in the chat. And if you see things that are missing, also drop it in the chat. So how do you want the library to make you feel? Most people really wanna feel welcome and included. People wanna feel curious. People wanna feel inspired. And I think most of all, people want a sense of community. So what do you love about your library now? Folks love the well-curated collections and the friendly staff. Um, There was also a shout out for the beautiful ceilings at North Portland and for the beautiful buildings in general. There was a specific mention for the love of the cultural competency library systems too. What do you need in your life that the library could provide? So many people answered. They needed just a space to work and a space for kids to play. We all need that third space that's outside of our house and outside of our work. So the library could really function as that. Um, Folks really wanted a connection to the neighborhood, a comfortable destination. You don't have to pay money to be in a library. You can just spend time there. Uh, child care, help with financial literacy, longer library hours, and an opportunity for tough talks. So somebody also added reading nooks throughout with comfortable seating and tables. So what else do you need in your life? Maybe the library could provide it, but just drop it in the chat. And then what's on your wish list for your library? The biggest wish that everyone has is a living room for the community. Just a great place for people to gather and learn from each other and to meet each other. Outdoor spaces, resources for the unhoused folks of our community. Longer hours, creative space for projects and art, maybe a lecture hall or a theater space, a fireplace, sounds cozy right now, an area for snacks and coffee and native and Black history sections. Family bathrooms were also important to our community. So if you think of anything that you don't see on here, feel free to add it in the chat. So now we're going to encourage you to think about yourselves. Think about your identity as a community member. What identities do you hold and what communities do you belong to? And then how can the new library acknowledge and support your identities? So we're gonna go ahead and give you some examples. So we asked our community at at our last community meeting about their identities. And here are some aspects of identities that people can think about. You can think about what neighborhood you live in. I live in Irvington neighborhood, so I'm really happy to be so close to Albina what kind of a cultural background you have, what your age might be, what your passions and hobbies are, what your family structure might be, what languages you speak or what languages you might be trying to learn. And what else? There are so many other facets of your identity. So we're all unique individuals and we actually perceive spaces differently based on our uniqueness. So that's why we're encouraging you to think about your identity as a community member. 
I'm going to launch the poll now so people can start uh, responding. Great. Is it launched? I believe so. Strangely, I don't see it. I saw all of the other ones. Hmm. Um, can you raise your hand if you cannot see the poll? So for those that of you that can't of books, see yeah. it right now, um, why don't you feel free to um, throw it in the chat? Um, yeah, Tyler, do you want to read uh, the text of the poll question? Do you just want to pop back a slide? It's right there. Oh, there we go. Thanks. I'm seeing now that it's worded a little bit differently on the poll that I launched, but it's essentially okay. the same questions. Yeah, we just want to know what are the things that contribute to your identity? What are the different communities that you belong to that are important to you? Any of those things. It's not necessarily about gender. It's uh, just however you identify. I personally, there's a slide about this. I have lots of things that I um, include in my identity, that I'm Black, that I'm Mexican, that I'm a daughter and a sister and a designer and an adventurer and a longtime North Portland resident. I grew up here in Portland. Um, and, and depending on, on the day, some things are at the top, right? Some things seem to be at the forefront of my mind and my experience throughout the day, but um, we are all complex and we are all different. Okay, um, awesome. I'm gonna end the poll up. now. Thanks, Suzanne. And that was really just an exercise to get you thinking about your own identity for this next series of questions that we're gonna launch into. Not necessarily, we, we left that poll so that you could respond anonymously. Um, you don't have to share your identity with anyone, um, but it's just great to start thinking about the things that make you who you are that also then impact the way that you perceive space and the things that are gonna be important to you in libraries. Yeah, yeah, um, so let's see. Uh, Esperanza, do you, have, um, do you have your interpretation on? I'm gonna maybe turn it off for one second so that I can ask our interpreters to reach out. Well, they can, they can hear you, the interpreters can hear you, Chandra. Can they still hear me? Oh, where yeah. are you? Because they, they're interpreting what you say. Oh, great, oh yeah, of course. So Luis and Maria, it looks like Esperanza. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, I saw that. And so I'm gonna unmute her so that she can share with us. Let me get back to my list of people here. Sorry, it takes just a second to switch through here. Ah, there you are, Esperanza. I have just asked you to unmute yourself so that you can share but I am gonna turn interpretation off because we will not be able to hear the interpreters if, um, if she wants to speak in Spanish. Sí, muchísimas. Ah, la, ya se la quité. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, muchísimas gracias ante nada en permitirme estar aquí. Sí me gustaría mirar más inclusión hacia mí a mi cultura en las librerías. Yo uso tres librerías. I can't hear our interpreters. Manage. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. You got me? Yep, um, I can hear you said, now, Maria. Okay, she said, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I would like to see um, more inclusion of my culture in the libraries. I use three libraries. Um, a mí en lo personal lo que me gustaría mirar más es que incluyan las otras este, etnicidades. And en este estado donde vivimos hay mucha multicultural. 
So um, I would like for more ethnic groups to be included, you know, because in this state where we live, there's a multicultural population. Y también de que ustedes preguntaron en qué es lo que, qué cambios ustedes pudieran hacer. En mi persona trabajo para la comunidad. Lo que más pide la comunidad es, son en este momento es salud mental. Yeah, Asistencia de abogados. Okay, um, you asked what changes we could make. I work with the community and what the community is asking for most at this time is um, mental health and um, legal help also. Y también me gustaría mirar más libros con lo que viene siendo más sobre a uh, las identidades. En mi caso, soy indígena maya. And so I'd like to see more books about different um, identities, cultural identities. In my case, I'm an indigenous Maya. Y también de que si ustedes quieren, si quieren hacer conocer más lo que viene siendo las librerías y que tenga más uso hacia mi comunidad, sería por la radio, la televisión del álbum. Del habla hispano es lo que yo pido para mi gente a uh, Latinx. So I would like que quiere que, que, que lo anuncie más en la, en la tele y en la radio. No lo entendí. Esperanza? Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I would like, um, oh, yeah, what, I would like what, what I would like you, I, I would like there, um, for the libraries to be like um, advertised more, like on the radio and on TV and geared toward my um, community, my Latinx community. Gracias, sería todo. Thank you, that's all. Thank you so much, Esperanza. Which is gracias. Muchas gracias. We're gonna go back to the... Yeah, yeah I we... can turn interpretation back on. Vamos a poner la interpretación otra vez. Start. Okay, interpretation is back on so that folks can hear directly from the interpreters. And I'm still sharing the screen. All right. So now that folks have gotten a chance to share their identities, again, I was sharing with you uh, different things that make up my identity. And uh, Tyler and Kelsey have also included the, those here just to share with you. This is who we are. These are the designers who are working on these libraries, who live in the neighborhood, um, and who are part of the community. So now with that in mind, Kelsey, do you wanna start these? Yeah, so we've got some new discussion questions for you, and we'd love for you to look at these questions through the lens of your multiple identities. Um, so first question is, what are your dreams for Albina in North Portland? The second question is, what can make these spaces specific to the Albina and North Portland communities? The third question is, what does investment in a library and community look like? The fourth question is, what is one challenge and one opportunity you see with these projects? And the fifth question is, what would a library need to have in order for you to use it or to use it more often. So Tyler has a poll to launch about these questions, but in the meantime, I would love to share with you what some of our other community members have answered. Hey, hit launch poll, but if it's not working on your end, again, maybe we could just stay on that slide for a little, little bit longer um, so that people can see the questions. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, and then maybe once we're, we've there kind we of go. given people some time to respond to them a little bit, then um, we can kind of jump into sharing the results that I receive and then um, okay. all the ones that we've seen so far. That sounds good because the poll did also, it did not pop up for me. So I'm sure that for other folks, it, did, it didn't launch. All that testing we did. Uh, <laughs> I know, sorry folks. Good thing we have this chat function to get to the answer. Yes. So one of the more straightforward questions I find is a little more approachable is, what would a library need for you to, to use it or to use it more often? So I know that 
that somebody suggested a large format scanner at one of our previous meetings. Some technology that's not common around our households would be great. Some, some large print and 3D books, as well as help with using digital tools. What else would a library need to just have you go in there and use it? Maybe it's just, you know, some drinking water. Maybe it's a bathroom. Maybe it's a cozy place to read a book by a fire. Maybe it's uh, parking spaces for, for a stroller or, or for your cargo bike that's covered from the rain so you can return your books on your commute. Maybe it's, a, it's an office where you can take a Zoom call away from your house. So we can go ahead and, and then share um, some of what we've heard from our other community members that might get your creative ideas flowing a bit here. So what are your dreams for Albina in North Portland? So some dreams would be to, to, lift, voice, to lift all voices, ideas, and prosperity. Um, inclusive, accessible, and modern. Smartphone-friendly printing. That sounds really helpful. Um, more connection between the functions and resources both branches can create to be a bridge between each other are some folks' dreams for North Portland and Albina. And the question of what does community, what does investment in community look like to you? So for some folks, that means a vibrant eco-district that centers equity. For some people, investment in supporting the houseless population. For some, it means give people that already live here opportunities to buy property. Flexible spaces inclusive of a wide range of resources and community needs and job support. Can we go to the next question, yeah. Kelsey? Okay. Let's see. So what can make these libraries spaces specific to their communities? So both, both Albina and North Portland have commonalities, but they also have differences. So we wanted to check in with you about what you see that could be reflected in these libraries of their communities. How, how can they be specific to the neighborhoods where you live? So for Albina, we can start a storytelling partnership with OpenSignal. We can have a local history section. For both libraries, we can acknowledge the history of place. We can have the Friends of Library we can have podcasting for storytelling. We can have intergenerational programming and programs for the unhoused population. Don't make it a place of white privilege for North Portland. The North Portland Library, both of these libraries have a very strong history in, in the black community of Portland. And many of those families have been pushed out of these areas as Chandra noted in our land acknowledgement. How can we function as a network between PCC and Jefferson? Youth resources, transition resources, and social workers in the branch. And as Esperanza shared with us earlier about things she would like to see in the library, raise your hand if you, um, uh, you can type in the chat any of your responses to these questions, but if you um, have a longer answer to these questions that you'd like to share with us, go ahead and raise your hand so I can uh, let you share with the group. So what are challenges and opportunities you see with these projects? Some challenges could include not enough parking with the expansion of Albina. That's right, there's currently not a lot of parking there for that small library, so if we make it bigger, we'll consider more parking. Disenfranchisement of marginalized identities is a challenge. 
opportunities could be a connector in Albina. Reinvestment in local community and economy and centering race, community, and the trauma and, and the trauma informed. Um, and then the last couple questions we have to share with you some of the answers from the community are, uh, what would a library need to have for you to use it more often? Folks have answered larger open spaces, outdoor learning spaces, youth performance space, quiet spaces, video games, better parking, a maker space, disabled access to all parts of the building, to be open more hours, to have summer classes, to have special sessions for, for creating, to have job interview help. And what else would you like to share? Somebody wrote to help us help ourselves and invite legislatures to visioning sessions at our library. So these are all awesome ideas that the community have put forward and we'd love to hear your ideas too. I got one response uh, in the poll that I can, that I'm gonna end right now. Click submit yes. if you haven't yet. Okay. Oh, I got two responses. All right, can, can y'all see the results of those polls? I cannot see them, Tyler. Maybe you wanna, if there's a way to copy them into the chat so folks can see. Yeah, I'll get right on it. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yes, thanks to those of you who could see the poll and were able to answer in it. Yeah, and if you would like to give us an answer verbally to any of these and explain to us what it is that you would like the library to have for you to use it more often, or challenges and opportunities you see, or in what investment in the community looks like. Any of these are great topics for discussion. And then we're gonna have one more sort of polling and question activity after this. But Tyler is adding into the chat, thank you. So for question number two, I'm gonna go back here. Question number two was what can make these library spaces specific to their communities? One answer we got was to focus on indigenous culture and have good local history books. Yes, there could even be a whole local history section. And here's an added answer to question number three. The question is what does investment in community look like to you? One answer is to have more spaces for teens have easy to use book scanner. Um, the ones at the central library are very slow. Good to know. And an answer to question five, question five is what would a library need to have for you to use it more often? Question five answer is a coffee shop, the open late hours and have an enhanced security. Another answer to question five is to have big spaces, green spaces, uh, tech online events like international book fairs. That sounds really cool, an international book fair. Yeah, I love it. Right. I'm gonna yeah, go back. Coffee to shop would be super nice too. Yeah. No. I love that idea. And question staffing four. Is, oh, sorry, Kelsey, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was gonna read Christine's comment. Staffing okay. is key to community inclusion. Is there some assurance funding will continue to keep all these new ideas running in the future at the libraries? Yeah, that's a big question. Yeah, great That's point. a great question. I'm gonna let someone on MCL staff uh, tackle that one, maybe a response in the chat. Is it okay yeah, if I do have not in the chat? Could I, could I, this is Katie. Do you oh, mind of course you can, I'm Katie, go to. for it. <laughs> well, not that I'm super great at explaining our different funding streams, but I do wanna point out for those who might understand it the way I do, 
We have our um, dedicated library funding that comes from the library district, that staff's funding, that staff's program, ongoing business costs, and then the bond, which is making new spaces, new community rooms of possible for us. So we have to plan very carefully. I think, Christine, that's a really important point that what we do, not only as the library, but who we partner with, because um, partnership is key to everything we do, almost everything we do at the library. Um, but I'll also say we, you know, we keep new ideas running in the future at the libraries, but we also try to really flex and change with community need. So we try not to say there's one thing we'll always do forever. Um, so we're always trying to innovate and find different ways of doing things that are more effective and efficient, but they're definitely very important because our building bond pays for the buildings, but it's our regular budget that pays for staffing and our normal operations costs. Thanks, Katie. And since we're in the very beginning stages of imagining these libraries, we really want you to think about best case scenario, blue sky thinking, kind of whatever you possibly need in your life, let us know so that it can be carried forward. Um, so that once we, you know, a year from now, we're showing you some floor plans and getting ready to get those approved. If we don't have space for something that you really wanted, you know, it'll be a little harder to try and get it in there. So, so we're here now and, and the past summer and fall to really get the best craziest, brightest, most wishful thinking ideas from everyone. And I wanted to add in, there was another response in the poll for question four, the question being, what are the challenges and opportunities you see with these projects? And I read an opportunity here to have more opportunities for minorities. So thank you for adding yes. that into the poll. Oh, great. Robin has added a response to awesome. question five. Question five is what would a library need to have for you to use it more often? More community spaces, both large and small, private meeting rooms for individuals, quiet spaces for people to work and learn, current books and periodicals that encourage learning, more community events like author visits, visiting lectures, events for youth and adults, Access to technology people do not have at home, like a 3D printer, laptops, tablets, printers and scanners, and software and programs that might normally cost a lot for individual people to use. That is great. Thanks for putting that in there because you're right. There's a lot of software out there that folks uh, don't want to have to pay for themselves. They are um, crazy expensive and um, not reasonable. And it's great to have a resource to be able to use those kind of programs somewhere. Yeah, I can imagine too that, that those expensive and kind of hard to access programs could work really well with, with 3D printers and laptops and tablets and just expanding both the software and the hardware for, for a really tech-focused center for learning and, and creating really advanced stuff as well as just cool beginner stuff. Yeah. Also, tutoring for students. Erica added that into the chat, but that would be um, a great thing to have into the libraries to uh, make them use them more often. And then added one about challenges. Maybe Katie, if you are there, you can hop in about challenges. Uh, there's a question now about where will there be an ability to keep the branches open? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And, you know, the short answer is during a lot of construction, no, because we need to have a really safe construction site. But we want to maximize and we don't want to um, close anytime earlier than we absolutely have to. And then the library is also looking at some alternate um, alternatives for service, whether that's through a, a mobile library or working with some partner locations. And that's going to be determined in 2022. Um, we don't know exactly when yet, but we'll be having alternates for service beyond just going to other library locations. Thanks, Katie. All right, Mad Libs. I'm going to try and launch it again, but if it doesn't pop up on your screen right now. Um, feel free to answer these in the chat. Yeah. Oh, great. Teen-focused after-school clubs. 
Uh, but yeah, and a great investment in community too, to really show teens that, that this is space for them and that they're valued community members. Yeah, thank you, Cynthia. It's such an opportunity in North Portland next to Jefferson. Yeah. So if you don't see the poll that popped up, it is two different Mad Libs. First one's on the screen right now. Feel free to go ahead and respond to that in the chat if you don't have a poll on your screen. Go ahead and hop to the second Mad Lib. I'll toggle back and forth between them in case you want to revisit, but here's the second Mad Lib. And Suzanne is adding these into the chat as well. Mad Lib number one was the new library is a blank place where blank can blank. And then Mad Lib number two is the new library is blank because it has blank and blank. Lot of room for creativity and interpretation. Let's see, the new library is a fun place where teens can hang out after school and get help with their homework and meet each other if they go to different schools. Like it. Yeah, what else do we have? The new library is an exciting place where I can learn new things. I added in a bunch more words, not just one word. You can do that too. What you got for Mad Lib number two, Kelsey? Let's see. I'm trying to think of when the new library is respectful because it has because it has a black resource center that honors the community of Albina in North Portland. I like it. Tyler, you got any thoughts about a Mad Lib? What do you want to add? Do you want to do one or two? Um I think uh, I want to do uh, want that one, number two. Okay. <laughs> the new library is a place uh, where community is built because it has space for us. To, it has space for us to gather and not be quiet. Yes. That's a good Ooh, one. I have one. A okay. new library is convenient because it has stroller and bike parking and it's on my bike route. Nice. I personally love Mad Libs. Why don't we check out some of the Mad Lib responses from Saturday's in-person event? The new library is a comfortable place where anyone can learn. Ooh, the new library is an adventure place where anyone can explore. I like that, adventure and explore. Those are great words. The new library is an inviting place where we can gather. The new library yes. is a magical place where kids, where kids at heart can discover and play. I like that too, kids are kids at heart. The new library is a tech-savvy place where we can podcast and 3D print. The new library is an inclusive place where all community members can feel connected to each other. And the new library is a great place where we can get peace. That's nice. That is nice. I like to imagine the library is a place I could go to after 
work between work and being at home where you can just yeah. find and get some peace. Um, oh, I, I've got some I could share in the poll sure. before we move on. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm going to end it now. So hit submit if you're still working on your answer. Okay, ending. And I'm going to share the results. Okay. Which I'm realizing now you probably can't see. Um, nope. I will... Uh, <laughs> I will post them okay. into the chat. Thank so you. Here's the ones for number one. Okay. And in the poll, we give people an opportunity to uh, describe their response in a little bit more detail. Um, so here's uh, uh, an additional clarity on one of those above responses. Oh, great. Yeah, the new library is a large place where people can learn. Yeah, this is great. People need space to learn and grow. Yeah, and one for number two. The new, the new library. library is valuable because it has resources and events. That is a good one. To elaborate, the teens need more fun spaces to learn, to meet people, and resources like mental health, culture, tutoring, and tutoring our teens in North Portland. Yes, that is such good feedback. Love that. I don't want to rush us through these, but I do want to make sure that we have time for our raffle because we only have six minutes left together. And that means it's raffle time. Um, Madeline, did you get a list of folks? Yes, we're ready to go. Last call if you haven't sent a message yet. If you haven't sent Madeline your name and your email, take this one last half a minute and send it to her and we will do the raffle. <laughs> Please raise your hand if you are trying to write a message right now and we will wait for you. If I don't see any hands raised, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Madeline to run the raffle. I'll share my screen. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing so that you can share. Okay, here we go. This is so dramatic. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Drum roll. Ooh. All, right. All right. Congratulations, John Congratulations. C. and Rocio B. Big winners. Yes. Thank you so much for joining our meeting and spending your evening with us, asking us all your good questions and contributing. We're going to build some great libraries with you, and we're really excited that you're along the ride with us. I'm going to share one last slide with folks, because as we said earlier, the community engagement process continues on through all of the design phases. So we will come back and invite you to more meetings in the future and invite you to reach out to us using this library spaces at multcolibe.org. You can also follow Multnomah County Libraries on Instagram to see postings about when uh, meetings are happening. And if you go to uh, some of these links were posted in our chat earlier, but this website here gives you more information on the chapter one bond projects, which include more than just the work that's going to be done on the Albina and North Portland Library. So stay informed, check out the library website, uh, check out these links that Liz is adding into the chat to stay informed and we will um, hopefully see you at the next event in person and online. And for those of you who are our raffle winners, 
we will email you to let you know how to collect your uh, $50 gift card. Congratulations. Erica, you want to wrap us up? Yes, absolutely. I think there's one last question um, in the community. I wonder, um, do we have um, a schedule yet for the next community meeting? We do not. Okay. So we've gone through a series of community meetings um, these past few months. And then as we transition into schematic design next year, um, we're going to look again at the schedule and that information will be posted on the website. Um, but it's not going to be right at the first of the year. So, so um, for folks who are interested in coming back, we would really love to have you. Just keep an eye on the Multnomah County website or on our Instagram. Or around town, actually, because we post um, flyers in lots of places. We leave flyers behind at um, the library branches. So Albina, North Portland, and Kenton, we leave flyers there for patrons to see what's happening. So when you're there, please check it out. Thank you so much, Chandra. I just want to thank all of you community members for joining in the conversation with us tonight. What an awesome opportunity it is for us to uh, collaborate together. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, there are some of our community members who, um, it, it's my assumption, are close uh, to the uh, 15th and Fremont location uh, where the Albina Library was for uh, several years, uh, who may be saddened to see uh, the redirection. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that your uh, feelings are valid and important to us as well. I want to just um, share with us um, maybe another thought. This is an opportunity for us to consider all who are a part uh, of the Albina community. Uh, there is a historic Albina community that sees these libraries as um, their own as well. Uh, there are new folks who are contributing to the Albina community. And this is an opportunity for all of us to collaboratively come together and try to provide a spaces that serve the breadth and width of all that makes up Albina, that historic component, those that are new, that are joining together. So I hope that this will be an opportunity for us to think broader, bigger, and, and to come together in a way that serves all of those who make up the Albina community. We thank you for staying connected. Please utilize all of those um, email addresses and websites and social media accounts to hear, to see, and we look forward to connecting with you and getting more of your input in the new year. Thank you. I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season. Stay safe and grateful, and we'll see you in the new year. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have Thank you night. so much for joining us. Indeed. Look forward to seeing you in the community. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for spending your Wednesday evening with us.